create a dubbing brush and this is a very nice dubbing brush tool that uh, works well to create some nice looking dubbing brushes. Now I'm going to start out with some UTC Ultra Wire. Um, this is the brassy size. Now in general you can do dubbing brushes with uh, stainless steel like uh, wire or uh, some people even use thread. I'm just going to show you this here. Anyway, with this specific dubbing uh, brush tool here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of measure out the length of the, the tool and just slide this end in right here. And you can give that a couple of whirls if you want. And then the other end, I want that secured down here in the hook, up around the peg, and then back down into the clip. Okay. So what we're going to do is once we've got our wire or thread or whatever you want to use for the, the backbone of this dubbing brush, I will then go ahead and put in my materials. Now, you can choose a variety of materials. I've got some seal, I've got some semi-seal, um, I've got some churro, just plain angora, muskrat, whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of these dubbing tools is that you can put a variety of materials in them. You can chalk up, chop up something like Arctic Fox, uh, you can chop up Marabou, and uh, anyway, the varieties are endless. If you want to mix your own dubbings, you can also do that as well. It works nicely. So what I'm going to do is going to use a little bit of this uh, kind of a spectrumized orange uh, semi-seal mix here. And what I, I just, depending on how long I want the fibers, you can kind of tear them apart but I'm just going to put them down into this little groove. Now you don't want to put too much material in this area because it will be a little bit harder for it to, uh, to bind together. Now a lot of these dubbing mixes here have already been pre-mixed but like I said you can put uh, different colors of dubbing in there as you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and start laying some of these in. and fill up the little trough here. Uh, we can finish this off, or I, if I wanted I could add a, a kind of an accent color, um, something like a, a blue or you know some other type of flash that you can. Uh, in this dubbing brush I've done blue and I've kind of combined some other colors in. This brush here is more for like sow bugs, works out really well. And here's another one that's just for you know some fine type leeches. So once we have the amount of material and the colors in there that we want, uh, another thing that you can add that's kind of nice is you can take a piece of saddle hackle and kind of preen back the fibers like so. And you can place that inside of the trough and when we bring over the wire it will make a nice little uh, trap for this saddle hackle so I'm going to preen these out so you want that nice and nice and uh, sticking out at uh, probably about a 45 degree angle and then I'm just going to set that down in here now in this case it's not going to go out all the way to the end so if I wanted I could probably just get rid of that amount there this actually kills two birds with one stone for flies like a woolly bug or something that's going to have some hackle in it, this actually will create a nice effect. Okay, when I've got that point, I take the end of my wire and I make sure I have good hold on it and I want that to sit down right on top of all the materials and the hackle fiber. And I want to keep that fairly tight. And once I've got that, I can grab both ends and just pinch those off. Now I can hold this here while I get my other end free. And now you'll notice as I lift them, they kind of lift together. And now it's simply a matter of starting to wind the brush. And I usually go until the wire breaks. It's usually uh, just right on the, as far as the amount of tension. That I need. Now 
got our dubbing brush that has a built-in hackle. Okay, the fly we're going to tie is basically just a leech pattern. It's going to have a bead head. So I'm just going to take a size 8 uh, streamer hook, one of those 3x long. I'm just going to put it into the vise here. Now in this case we're going to use the Norvice, so that is going to allow us to put on our uh, materials a lot quicker. So once I get that secured in the, the vise there, I have my dubbing brush that I created in the uh, dubbing brush tool, and we will go ahead and get started. Alright, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a little bit of brown thread here. I'm just going to go ahead and dress the hook and for the tail I'm going to use some rust brown arctic fox. I like arctic fox a little better because it's uh, a little bit more durable than the traditional marabou. Now this is arguably one of the easier flies that you'll ever tie. What I do is take the dubbing brush that we made on the dubbing tool, and I'm going to go ahead and clip it off right here. Now I'm going to tie in a half hitch or two, right there. Now with the vise, we'll go ahead and spin the body on here. Put that up to the bead where we want it. Go ahead and thin that off with a couple of wraps. Again, we'll use the scissors we don't care about to cut the wire. I'll give it a few final wraps. Then we're going to go ahead and whip finish. And add another one for good measure. Now, to uh, get this fly finished, I'm going to go ahead and use a dubbing teaser and give it the once over here. I want it on the top and the bottom. And don't worry about being too hard on it because that's what you want. You want all those fibers to come out. Now, as I do that, you'll see now that the uh, hackle fibers have kind of started to go out and splay from the body just like you would have normally seen had you done a hackled pattern. So we again kind of kill two birds with one stone. Anyway, there we are. That's our finished semi-seal leech, bugger, whatever you want to call it, done with the dubbing brush.